Hello and welcome to another Double Sleeve Review, where today we're doing a binder review and we're starting with the Vault X 9 Pocket Strap Binder. How will it fare in our rigorous testing? If you enjoy these reviews and all of our videos on the channel, hit the like button and why not even subscribe? You'll see when all the new reviews are coming out and you'll get the first look to see whether or not a product is worth buying. We're hoping to do some fairly new products as and when they come out so you can get kind of a first look if you're interested in it. If there's a product you want us to review, go down in the comments and tell us what it is and we'll do our best to get to it. In this review, we're gonna go through a bunch of different things about this binder the build quality and materials, the durability, the card fit, the bendability, the security, the clarity, and obviously the price. It is worth noting that Vault X do three different sizes of the strap binder, the four pocket, the nine pocket, and the 12 pocket. We have been reviewing the nine pocket version. There will be some slight differences in some of the categories. However, largely everything we say will be applicable for all of the different sizes. So starting with build quality and materials, and this binder is made using a thin sheet of flexible plastic reinforced on the front and back with an additional sheet. The pages are made using a thick black perforated material with the clear plastic pockets attached. The whole thing is secured using a thick elasticated strap uh, that keeps it somewhat closed. The materials and build quality are very reminiscent of other binders on the market. Initially, you would assume it's very similar to that of the Ultra Pro Eclipse binder, for instance. Voltex haven't tried to change the game here. They've stuck with a recipe that they know works for others and done the same here. The black pages with the clear plastic are all archival safe, acid free, non PVC material should keep your cards safe for a long period of time without damage. Overall, we found the quality to be good, the materials to be fair, and the construction to be sound. Not bad. Now we look at card fit. And when it comes to card fit, it's a little bit more complicated than you might think. Uh, you could put the cards in as they are. You could inner sleeve, you could outer sleeve, you could penny sleeve. You could do any combination of those. Um, we decided to purely outer sleeve all the cards that we put inside this binder just to give a kind of average of how the cards would fit. We've done this with all binders that we are currently testing and have tested before. So it does give some sort of consistency. And what we're looking for here is a good fit. Um, there is such a thing as a loose and a tight fit. We will grade based on that scale, but fundamentally too loose, the cards risk falling out and nullifying the whole point of having a binder too tight. And you could risk damaging the cards either in getting them in or out of the binder or even just being in the binder itself. So we're looking for that Goldilocks sweet spot in the middle. And I'm pleased to say after sleeving and entering all 360 cards, which is how many this binder holds, um, all of the cards that we put in were a good fit. There was nothing that was worrying and compared to some binders we've tested, it was a very consistent level of pocket size, which is not something that some of the cheap binders from other manufacturers can necessarily say. So good job on card fit. Next we look at bendability. And as far as protection goes, bendable and delicate cardboard needs some sort of external rigidity for protection. And so we look to a binder to offer that. So a binder that is overly flexible and bendable potentially doesn't offer you the protection you may desire. So simply put, we grab the binder and we bend it. And if it is easily bent, we say so. If it is very rigid and strong and secure, great. So that is how, literally, that is all we're doing. So overall, as you probably would have predicted, this rather thin plastic covered binder is very bendable. This is not ideal for everyone, but if that doesn't bother you, it could still well be just what you're looking for. Next, we look at durability, and this is for two reasons. Number one is to 
trying to protect your cards even further. But number two is because your cards are aesthetically pleasing and you want to put it inside a binder, no doubt, so you can look at the cards, show off the cards and store them in an attractive way. So if your nice binder were to easily scratch or dent, it's not going to do what you necessarily need it to do, especially, as I said, if it damages the cards in the process. To test this, we do a few simple things. To start with, from scratch resistance, we grab the cover and we scratch it with our nail. Um, simple test, 10 times, see what happens. The result was a little bit of discoloration, but nothing too major. Then we use a basic ring, uh, something a little bit tougher, and something metal, again, to simulate what it would be like if you were regularly handling the binder. And 10 scratches, and again, just a little discoloration. Lastly, we use a pen without the nib um, in order to give it something a little bit potentially scratchy um, without discoloring the binder. And again, after 10 scratches, with the intent on trying to simulate a little bit of hardware, um, no grooves or dents were formed, merely just a lighter coloration of this binder. Next, we move on to looking at its dentability, if that's such a word. And simple test, we put the full binder on the floor and we take a satin tower deck box and we drop it from waist height uh, with the point of the corner facing down. We drop that several times and as you can see here, we do dent the binder. And it is worth noting that one of those dents it actually went through to the top page. No damage to the card, but a tiny little groove in the plastic pocket. Lastly, we do the drop test, which is where, again, completely full and strapped up, um, I drop the binder from waist height with the spine corner pointing down. I do this on both ends, and you can see here it is grooved, creased, and the internal additional plastic uh, reinforcements have begun to separate. So um, definitely not the toughest binder and after one drop, certainly not gonna look great if the spine is facing towards you on a shelf or something. So overall for durability, uh, not the worst, uh, but certainly not the best. Um, if you care a lot about what your binders look like and you're maybe a little bit haphazard with the way that you uh, store them or carry them or you like to, to keep them in a bag or you're regularly maneuvering them and it might not be the most hardy. However, if you just want something plain and simple that you're gonna look after, shouldn't get too bad. A few scratches and scrapes here won't do much damage to it. Next, we look at security and simply put, we're trying to see how hard it is for cards to fall out of the binder um, basically during transport. So what we do, we grab specifically this, but a rucksack, place it inside and we shake this, oops, sorry, microphone, we shake this bag in multiple directions. This is a bad demonstration, but you know what I'm getting at. So that it really does simulate what would be like if you are running for the bus or um, it was a particularly treacherous hike or something um, whilst carrying the, the binder full of cards. And then we also empty half of the cards out so we can see what it's like when, you know, when it's full and therefore a little bit more compressed. And overall, when it's full, no movement, really good. But when half full or half empty, depending on how you are, um, some of the cards did move out. We had um, roughly 10 cards slip out of the, uh, the their relevant little pockets and two cards make their full way out of the binder page and were just sticking out of the binder. They weren't loose in the bag, but they would have been after a little bit longer. So it uh, definitely makes you think be careful if you're only putting a few cards in and you're a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a jogger or you're, I don't know, jumping off walls or something. Um, but it is an interesting test and certainly shows that it's not 100% secure. However, it is a pretty extreme example of uh, a test. So if you're only carrying it around and you're very careful and maybe you're driving to and from your LGS, it probably is less of a concern. 
Next we look at clarity and just like we do with inner and outer sleeves, we put the foil card halfway into the binder pocket and we see what the effect is. And I'd be pleased to say that very clear, very nice, um, and your foils will look great inside of the binder, assuming that you uh, use a relevant and nice looking sleeve. And lastly, we look at price, and Vault X have these available on their website at $15.99. However, we do actually sell them on our little uh, UK TCG site, doublesleeve.co.uk, little plug, um, for $12.49. There you go, you see. Um, and that is a very reasonable price, not just saying that, obviously, um, but it's cheaper than Ultra Pro Eclipses and even Game Genix uh, basic binders. So a very good price, I would say, um, but always do your own research on price. We only ship to the UK, for instance, and we're not always gonna be in stock. So make sure that you check um, all other uh, prices around your areas to see what they're like, but that's a very good price. So, what do you think about this binder? Um, one last thing we need to mention is Vault X have a one year warranty on all of their products. So that is something that we can't say any other TCG manufacturer boasts. So, um, very good. We'd love to see all TCG manufacturers are doing that. It definitely should give you a bit of confidence when you're purchasing this kind of product or any other Vault X products, to be fair. So good on you, Vault X, for that. That's very good. Um, do you like this binder? Are you a fan of the kind of flexible binders? Or do you like something a little bit more fancy or robust, bigger, smaller? What are your thoughts? We'd love to know in the comments below. And we will be doing more binder reviews. There's another Vault X binder review of their Exotech binder um, coming soon. If you want to make sure you don't miss that, be subscribed to the channel. Go on, you know you want to. Um, but hey, this has been great. Great to do another review. We've done a lot of other different TCG videos recently. Hopefully you've enjoyed those too. And hey, yeah, like the video, subscribe, we appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much.